Now, look, I'm not too sure, talking about good people, I'm not too sure people are much interested in what is said by this fellow Michael Cannon-Brooks. We do know that he's a 40-year-old billionaire who lives in Australia's most expensive house, which he bought for $100 million, and we know he's on every rich list here and there. But he seems to think that his money gives him a licence to be offensive when it suits and to lecture Australians on issues about which he doesn't seem to know very much. You might remember he made headlines in 2018 when he described as bullshit a Scott Morrison YouTube video promising Australians fair dinkum power. Quote, Scott said, that works when the sun doesn't shine and the wind doesn't blow. Canon Brooks tweeted, I'm not sure you know what fair dinkum means, before proceeding to claim that solar and wind generated, quote, electricity can be reliable, renewable and cheap. I don't know what handbook he's reading from, but I thought the 2016 statewide blackout in South Australia demonstrated renewable energy is anything but reliable and cheap. But I suppose it's easy to be ignorant of the real world when you're a billionaire living on the waterfront in the $100 million Fairwater Sydney mansion. What Cannon Brooks doesn't tell us is that he appears to have a financial stake in renewable energy. He's an investor in the Solar Asset Fund, which has received $50 million in taxpayer-funded loans from the Clean Energy Finance Corporation and which has solar farms in Queensland and Victoria. Furthermore, despite his sermonising, Cannon Brooks's contribution to what you might describe as the national effort is pretty lame. More of that in a moment. But unbelievably, this tech billionaire appears to have been a keynote speaker at the Financial Review's Business Summit in Sydney yesterday, back on his hobby horse of telling anyone foolish enough to listen that climate change is the problem and, by inference, renewable energy is the answer. Cannon Brooks reportedly argued that business can no longer sit on the fence when it comes to environmental and social issues. He described Labor's net zero emissions target by 2050 as, quote, the reality of what we need to do, adding that he would be, quote, more than happy, unquote, to be included in a working group expected to be set up to guide the government's so-called technology roadmap for emissions reduction. Cannonbrook said this, as business leaders, we have an awesome responsibility. Employees want us to ensure we're making the planet better, not worse. Now, I don't know which employees he's referring to. And again, the wink, wink, nod, nod is embrace renewable energy. But be that as it may, if we're talking social responsibility, what about the social responsibility of paying an appropriate level of tax? You see, despite his sermonising, Canon Brooks's contribution to what you might describe as the national effort on the tax front is pretty thin. His company Atlassian, which allegedly earns one billion a year in revenue, is reportedly structured to pay no corporate tax in Australia. By comparison, the fellow rich lister, Gina Reinhardt's company, paid $352 million in company tax in 2018, along with state royalties. Gina Reinhardt's financial contribution to Australia surely ought to earn her a political soapbox, if she wanted one, at an event like the Financial Review's Business Summit. But wouldn't you think a business summit, especially in this climate, would be prosecuting the case that we all must pay our fair share of tax? Out there in Struggle Street, Canon Brooks's paltry contribution hardly justifies an invitation to such an event. And surely it doesn't entitle him to lecture us about awesome responsibilities. Hard-working Australians, rather than opportunistic Australians, would expect anyone who wants to harangue us about social responsibility to begin by exercising some himself.